Hello friends, welcome back again to my channel. In our lesson today, we are looking at graphical solution to simultaneous linear and quadratic equation. We are given two equations. One is quadratic, the other is a linear equation, and we are expected to solve them simultaneously using graphical method. So in our tutorial today, I'll be teaching you how to solve cases like that. In my previous video, we were able to treat how to solve um, the same problem using substitution method without using graph you can still achieve the same result. So, but in this lesson, we are looking at how to use graph to solve it. So the first thing we are going to do is to prepare a table, all right? Prepare a table for the first equation, the quadratic. Prepare a table for the linear equation. How do we do that? You are going to choose values for x. When you have chosen values for x, you substitute into the quadratic equation. Then you get corresponding values for y. Sometimes the values of x are given to you. In the next question we are solving, we will solve cases where the values of x will be given already in the question. All right, so we choose values for x and get values for y. Choose values for x, same thing here, and get values for y. So let's choose numbers from minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Between minus 3 and 3, and then we we'll solve to get the values of y. Let's also choose values for x here. Let me choose between minus 2, 0, and 2. Any value you are choosing for x must give you a corresponding value of y. Okay? So here is y. Let's solve the quadratic first. The quadratic, we have y to be equal to 2x squared plus, plus x minus 5. Now let's substitute. When x is a negative 3, we have x to be equal to a negative 3. Put it here for x. So we're going to be having 2 times minus 3, substituting for x, raised to the power of 2, plus this guy is minus 3, minus 5. 3 squared will give us 9. 9 times 2 will give us 18. Plus minus is minus. So 18 minus 3 will give us 15. 15 minus 5 will give us 10. So y is going to be what? 10. We put it here. Then we solve for negative 2. We'll be having y equal to 2. We put minus 2 here, squared, plus negative 2 minus 5. Negative 2 squared is 4 times 2. We have 8. 8 minus 2, 6. 6 minus 5, 1. So y is going to be positive 1. So we have here as 1. The same for negative 1. When x is a negative 1, y is going to be what? 2 into negative 1 squared plus negative 1 minus 5. Negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 2. 2 minus 1. We have 1. 1 minus 5 will give us a negative 4. Then we put 0. When x is a 0, what will we have for y? We have 0 squared plus 0 minus 5. We have put 0 for x everywhere. So 0 squared is 0 times 2, 0, minus, or plus 0, 0, minus 5. We have a negative 5. So negative 5 for the value of y. So here, uh, y is 0. We continue for a positive 1. When x is a positive 1, then we substitute and solve the same. We are going to be having y to be equal to 2 into 1 squared plus 1 minus 5. 1 squared is 1 times 2. We have um, 2 plus 1, 3. 3 minus 5 is minus 2. So y is going to be a negative 2. We add it here, negative 2. Then we solve when x is a positive 2. If x is positive 2, then we're going to be having 2 into 2 squared plus 2 minus 5. 2 squared, 4 times 2, 8, plus 2, 10, minus 5, we have a positive 5. So y is a positive 5. Add it here. And finally, when x is a positive 3, we'll be having y to be equal to 2 into 3 squared plus 3 minus 5. 3 squared is... 9 times 2, 18 plus 3, 21. 21 minus 5 is 16. So we are going to have y to be 16. So here is 16. 
and at this point we've gotten all the corresponding values of um, of y so let's solve for the linear equation the linear equation we have y to be equal to 3 minus x we substitute 2 therefore y is going to be that is when x is a negative 2 y is going to be what this is 3 minus minus 2 don't forget to put this guy in a bracket now minus times minus is positive so 3 plus 2 is 5 here is 5 then when we have 0 when x is 0 what do we do y is equal to 3 minus 0 3 minus 0 is 3 we add 3 here and finally when x is 2 we substitute we are going to be having y to be equal to 3 minus 2 substituting for x 3 minus 2 is 1 therefore here is 1 now we have gotten all the values of x and all the values of y for both the quadratic and the linear equation what next do we do we plot the graph from the graph we will be able to determine the roots of the straight line and the curve the quadratic is going to give us a curve and then the straight line is going to give us a straight line so to plot the graph the first thing we do is to prepare the cartesian plane the y-axis and the x-axis top is the positive y down the negative y the right positive x the left our negative x so we are going to represent the units on the graph using a scale given to us but in this question the scale was not given so in situations where scale is not given you plot the graph using a reasonable scale of your choice so i've chosen two four six eight ten that is two units to represent two centimeters this is zero the origin where the y plane and the x plane intersects the origin so from zero to two is two cm two cm two cm so the spaces between the units is two two centimeters and then for the x-axis i chose one unit because the highest number i have on the x-axis is, is three and the least number is negative three so using one cm i will still have all the units covered so for the y-axis i used two, two units because i need to cover 16 which is the highest value of the y plane all right so the next thing we do is to plot i have negative 3 and positive 10. negative 3 for x axis this is negative x this is negative 3 and positive 10 will be located here the intersection will be here where negative 3 and positive 10 will meet make asterisk there to get the second one plotted we have positive negative 2 and positive 1 negative 2 for x positive 1 on the y axis we locate positive 1 in between 0 and 2 the half of 0 and 2 that should be somewhere here so trace it out under 2 and make a series this is it then the next is negative 1 for x negative 4 for y i will locate my negative 1 here and down the y axis this is negative 4 so i'll make my asterisk here the next is 0 and negative 5 this is my zero for x negative five has to be in between negative four and negative six this is negative six so half of it halfway will be my negative five here so trace it down okay this is zero so it has to be on the y plane each time you are plotting zero against any value then it has to be on that plane okay so i plotted it here the next i have one and negative two one for x this is one for x remember this is x plane and negative two for y this is my negative two so i will make the asterisk here what next positive two and positive five this is positive two take it up positive five will be in between six and four so i'll take it out here make asterisk and then we have three for x which is here and 16 16 is top here so they are going to be meeting here look at this line take it up we have our axis made here next we join the points all the points will be joined using a curve right you can use a french curve or a broom or use a freehand sketch i'll use my freehand sketch get the points joined together in a smooth curve
All right. Okay. Having drawn the curve, which is for the quadratic equation, the next thing we are going to do is to draw a line for the straight line equation. So this one is going to give us um, a straight line graph. We are using the same Cartesian plane, the same scale, and the same everything. So we have negative 2 and a positive 5. Locate positive 2 on the, on the x plane, which is negative 2 here, and then positive 5 for y. Positive 5 is going to be somewhere in between 4 and 6. The half of 4 and 6, which is here. So I'll take it out to meet 2 at this point. Make your asterisk. Next, I'll draw for 0 and 3. 0 for x, 3 for y. And this is my 0 for x. Take it up to 3. 3 will be in between 2 and 4. So halfway to 4, give me 3. So that should be here. All right? And I'm going to make the asterisk on the plane. Okay? Whenever you, have, you are plotting 0 against a number, make your axis at that exact number. Then finally, we have 2 against 1. 2 for x, which is on the positive, and 1 for y. 1 will be from 0 to 2, halfway. So we bring it all the way to here. We are meeting here, okay? So make use of your ruler to join all the points. So I've succeeded to get my straight line and my quadratic curve, okay? So the next thing we are going to do is to determine the roots of the equation. What is the roots? The roots of the equation is the point where the curve and the straight line intersects, okay? The curve is touching the straight line here, somewhere here, and then somewhere here. So we are going to trace the both of them down to the x-axis and here to the y-axis. Trace this one also down to the x-axis and trace this one to the y-axis. Then pick out all the points wherever it will touch x and the y-axis. All right, let's do that. So we are going to be tracing this guy down. Trace it down here to touch here. Take note of here. Then trace it here to touch here. We take note of this. We are going to be picking the numbers. Then this one also, trace it down. Take note of here. And trace this one to y axis. We take note of here. So the next thing we will do after locating the points on the x and y axis, that is the values of x and y in the given quadratic and linear equation. The next thing we do is to determine the values. And to determine the values, you must know the values of the little, little lines because all the points are located on the little, little lines. Look at them, all of them on the little, little lines. So how do I locate for x-axis? The unit I am using is one unit to represent two centimeters. So I'll be saying one unit over the number of little lines per box. Inside one box, I have 10 little lines on the x-axis. So I'll say over 10. If you divide, you have 0 0.1. So each little line, we are going to count it as 0 0.1. For the y-axis, we, we used two units to represent two centimeters. So we're going to be saying two units over total units inside there, or the number of the little lines, which is still 10. When you divide, you have 0 0.1, 0 0.2. So each little line will be counted as 0 0.1 for the x-axis and 0 0.2 for the y-axis. So let's pick up our points. This number here is 1, so I'll start counting from 1. This is 0 0.1, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and 1.4. So x-axis will give us 1.4 when y is, count the points that was produced by the intersection here. So we have from 0, we have um, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, this is 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, 1 1.2, 1.4, 1.6. We have 1.6. Then we go to the second one. We have minus 2 here. So we start counting from minus 2. This is minus 2.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. So when x is minus 2.6, what will be the value of y? We are going to be counting this one. So the next number to this point is 4. We start counting from 4. This is 4.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 5.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.11, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, 0 0.15, 0 0.16, 0 0.
5, 5.2, 5.4, 5.6. We have 5.6. So we have gotten the roots of the quadratic and the linear equations, which are these. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. I'll be solving another question in my next video to incorporate many other things that this question did not handle. So check the next video I'll be dropping tomorrow on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, share to your friends, and follow for more interesting mathematics tutorials. Bye.